The Blokebusters Podcast is a proud member of the Pod Bros Network. You can find us as well as other great shows such as The Ectoplasm Show, AB Film Review, and Media Litter Sandwich over at podbros.com. And now get ready to share and enjoy the Blokebusters Podcast. Tonight's story is somewhat unique and calls for a different kind of introduction. Houston, we have a problem. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Get away from her, you bitch! And like that, he's gone. Hello, welcome everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the I'm Podcast. Cool. Hold on, I'm Brian. Sec. Hold on. I can... Brian, I can hear someone It's probably just a delay. Rick, it's probably just Rick. a delay on the mic. Is there, some, is there someone there? I can, I can Are we okay someone. on our Skype? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Wait, what? Who? Hit. Hello. I think we're okay. Hello. Yeah. What is that? What? Guys, uh, is there someone there? I can I can hear someone. <laughs> who's there, who's that? Is there a distant <laughs> faint voice? Is there a voice? Is there <laughs> something that you want to say? Spirits, are they speaking again? Yeah, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, you doing hijacking our podcast? <laughs> what is this? I thought this was our podcast. This is our podcast. This is this is this is uh, back to the podcast. What is this? Hey, great. This is hey, did. Blockbusters, I hate to inform you. Uh, yeah, good. Ron, Paul. Hi boys. <laughs> Hello. Hey boys. Hey. What, what, what the hell is going on here? Uh, I, I don't know. We I mean we just trying to record a review of Dunkirk, and uh, we just heard you guys talking. So oh, that's, we that's, tried turning it off and on again. Yeah, that's, know, that's, that's what we were going to do. We were going to review Dunkirk as well today. Do you, do you fancy um, do you fancy doing it together? Uh, uh, sure. Or, I, mean, I, I mean, I guess I don't want to be rude. If we sure. Have to, yeah, <laughs> <I guess. laughs> well, You're more than welcome. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, sure. well, we've never we've never done a cross uh, cross the ocean. Review before we've we've done our usual Oscars, but this is a first for a film film review. So uh, yeah, let's see what yeah, we've got in store. We could, we could kind of uh, turn this into some kind of summer blockbuster bonus bumper <laughs> podcast uh, with an excessively uh, long title. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I think that is a uh, brilliant idea. Yeah, we'll have to come up with one even longer than our regular <laughs> one. But, uh, I think we can do <laughs> it. Yes, on the cake, the, boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, uh, uh, before we jump into that, then, so how, how have you guys been? <laughs> It'd be good, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's been it's been a good summer, both uh, movie-wise and not, I guess. I don't know how Byron feels about that. I think we've disagreed on quite a few films this year. Yeah, there's been there's been a couple of ups and downs uh, in, in the movie world. Um, yeah, there's just lots of stuff going on, as always. We're going to keep our finger on the pulse, watching a few TV series. Obviously, Thrones has just come to an end, so we're, we're going to talk uh. about that at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that that one. Maybe you can have Brian. Yes, yeah, so I. Yeah, that. I am in deep in my anti. You know, my post Thrones depression now. So. <laughs> it's not. We got shortchanged this year, and we may not be getting one till 2019. So no, 20. I did not hear that just then. Are you yeah, you two, two years. Yeah. Because their shooting uh, doesn't begin for a few months yet, and they are going to have a huge post production schedule this year. Given the what's happening in the show, I heard um, the, the rumor they wonder that, if they're going to have it out by. Do you know what's happening right so, now? Every yeah. Sherlock fan is playing the world's smallest violin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I but, heard a rumor hey, that Thrones has a little more reach than Sherlock. Sorry, yeah, yeah. they're, 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 pl- they're planning on doing full length, like feature length episodes of the last yeah. series. Which along is along the lines of Sherlock length episodes. Yeah, yeah. man, I like that. Eighty that's to a ninety lot minutes of, for six production. episodes, but. <laughs> Yeah, I I am expecting 2019. That's the mindset I'm going in with, and then I will be pleasantly surprised if it's 2018. But <laughs> yeah, well, I think that will be maybe it'll be your Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, but we have Westworld till then, so uh, well, that's important. We need that. Yeah, I need that. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your theory on Westworld, then, guys? <laughs> They're all robots. <laughs> it's a brilliant take. I every know, single one of them. Every single one of them. They're all robots. Um, I don't know. I got to rewatch that first season. But yeah, I'm, um, I'm just looking forward to seeing more. I haven't read the original book, so I have you I seen the original film with uh, that Brenner? one? No. What actually. have uh, have you? I'm assuming you have, Byron. <laughs> Hey, not again. He's done it again. <laughs> Bloody Paul Hawkins. Is that yet another movie he's pissed away and not watched it. I don't believe this bear. <laughs> I know. Sorry, you guys are still there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> continually surprises me with what he has and has not seen. Yeah, no, um. I, no, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, my, my film viewing habits growing up were very different from apparently everyone else on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're finally realizing that. <laughs> Maybe all you ever saw on television was Gladiators, the TV series. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my babysitter was in that. That's how I saw that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> wait, wait. Trivia, trivia. Yeah, you need trivia. to expand on back that up, point. Back trivia. Yeah, what, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sh- uh, Jet from the Gladiator TV show. That was my old babysitter. Oh, that must have been so awesome. Hang on a minute. I'm Googling this. Sh- I'm Googling this. <laughs> you must have really right enjoyed now. being yeah. babysat for. Um. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry to hear her babysitting career wasn't going well, but... Yeah. And, yeah, well, she had, she just had to pay the bills somehow. Yeah, I guess. Boom! I mean. we've, just, we've just uh Googled a little picture of her there. I bet you did whatever she told you to do, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> oh, brainwashed, Jay. Okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh I think maybe maybe the news that sh- she was my babysitter just erased all of it from my mind. I was just like, what? <laughs> Oh, you still in touch with her now, yeah? Uh, no, sadly not. <laughs> oh. Shame. I think we need to get a reunion in the works. I think we oh, need to make this happen. I'm seeing a whole new kind of podcast coming up here, boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I God. think we need to reach out to her, find her on Twitter somewhere, and we got to make this happen, guys. Yeah, kind of doing a... Uh, somehow figure out a riding in cars with babysitters type podcast. Don't, <laughs> don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. We can review. Or uh, the babysitter's club. Or, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get. I don't want to piss all over the uh, the parade here. But can we go back very quickly to the movie review type podcasting that we sometimes talk about? Um, you, were ju- you were just mentioning um, Westworld a minute ago, and I really, really what was hoping. Do you know? In the last season, they gave us just a tiny little sniff of that kind of. I don't know. I'm going to call it samurai world. We saw it for about thirty seconds. Yeah, and that was mm-hmm. it. I am hoping yeah. we're going to get a little a, a little dunk more in that cup of tea. I think we will. I, I really feel strongly that we are going to see a lot of that samurai world. Um, they, there's no reason for them to give it that little nod without kind of embracing it in the next season. Well, so. Yeah, and if they're going based on the books, from what I've heard, like Westworld is just one of many, and in other books he's written, he's covered the other world. So if they're yeah you know, reaching for more content mm-hmm. that yeah definitely makes sense to end up in that world and any of the other one that i'm sure they're the future world as well that uh, they'll end up going to so. mm-hmm. oh that'd be i hate to say this but you do, do you know that there's a uh, season two trailer out yeah, i've had a little look it didn't uh, you know, yeah i saw that yeah i was oh, uh, it didn't, didn't i was sending away. that all over the place i have not I seen that. that and that oh, i will yeah, we'll pull it up after yeah I, I typically try and shy away from stuff. Although, if it's the first trailer, it's probably not going to. It be doesn't too give you too much. No. no. Um, yeah, but it, it's definitely enough to get you excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least me. I don't know. Even but. more than Jet from Gladiators. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, and congratulations so, um, to Tandy Newton, I believe, nominated, and also Evan Rachel Wood, I think, was put nominated as well. Really? Um, wow. Golden Globe, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. No. No. That's that was a job well done. Let's be honest. That mm. was a job well done. That was I mean, the, the the performances. I mean, across the bar, it's tough to pick. Like sometimes I I have this discussion with another friend, like who is really killing it in that show and the answer is everyone <laughs> like Jeffrey Wright you know Danny Newton mm-hmm. Evan Rachel Wood Anthony Hopkins I mean they're all just bringing it in that show well I was you know I kind of want Hopkins to be in the next series and the way for that to happen is for them to do the timeline to wind it back and say now Samurai World mm-hmm. before that all goes crazy and he could be well, in yeah or unless he was you know a host that you know, spoilers, of course, for Westworld that yeah, we're gonna. had you know was killed there in the finale. Yeah. Well, I and mean, they could do what they did with the first series, which you don't realize they're mm-hmm. doing until the end, because whenever it was, and it's been so long since so I'm blanking on name, but uh, I would say the the main female lead, mm-hmm. uh, like whatever she was talking to, uh, to the guy that created her, you don't realize till the end it at that actually was him like before he died and yeah you've been seeing a different timeline so there's no 
yeah. reason that they couldn't do that again. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they're happy to play the play with the time thing. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm really. We're going to need this though, Brian, aren't we? We're going to need a bit of drip feeding here because in this, in the uh, this very long hiatus before we get Game of Thrones, let's be honest, we're going to need a little something, something. Uh, we need some premiere t- uh, television, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> between now and then. Yeah, yeah, something's yeah. got to come along, and there's a vacuum for something to come along where people will want it. The, the yeah. business model is there for something that's a bit more higher rated. Do we know when we're getting Westworld series two? Do, do we know when we're, we're, it's hitting the screens? Um, I I know it's slated for 2018. I I would imagine, I would the, imagine the same time of year that it came out, but I'm not sure. I'm not seeing a release date for season two. Right. But I mean, yeah, if they're willing to wait until it's you know done i'm fine with that because yeah i'd rather they get it right and wait (laughs) than rush it really to rush it yeah i'm with you on that one actually i'd rather see something that's really really good than something that's rushed because the last thing we need now is another whole guardians of the galaxy 2 hoo-ha with this thing well yes (laughs) on that subject i know byron this won't affect you at all but have either of you guys watched any of the defenders yet no, I, I have. I have. I've now seen all of the Marvel Netflix. The the reviews got to me before I could get to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't. I was, I mean, I would urge if people are into that universe, then maybe go out and watch it and come up with your own opinion. But I finished yeah. it a couple of days ago, and and talking about things that feel rushed. That that's exactly how I felt. I just felt like there was so much potential there for a really great mm-hmm. great series, considering. The, the you know the initial content the, the the content that fed into it was was so strong I just felt it, it felt really really rushed and 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 not not as good as it could have been in my opinion but like I say I would urge people who are into that stuff to go out and watch it and make your own because I know some people that disagree with me but I, I, it felt I, very rushed to me I I can see what you're talking about. I will definitely say it was better than Iron Fist. I was just going to ask. Thank oh, you. I was like, it's got to at least be better than it was, Iron Fist. It was better than yeah. Iron Fist. Yeah, but it's that wasn't difficult. because it had all the other people. But nowhere near Jessica Jones or Luke Cage. Right? No. Uh, <laughs> nowhere near Jessica Jones. Uh, Somewhat near Luke Cage. <laughs> I, I, under Luke, I, I, like I liked Luke it more Cage, than yeah. I enjoyed the second season of Daredevil as well. Okay. Really? I See, I really like the second series of Daredevil. Those two are still my favourites up there. And, and Luke Cage and Jessica Jones are, are, are beneath that. But yeah, Iron Fist was just was just turd. And, 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 and he was still turd in it. That's the problem. Because I, I just think, deep down, he's a terrible actor. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he shouldn't be playing that role. You know? uh, well, I, I was texting with a friend of mine who... Like, he's the guy I typically go to to like geek out and nerd out with on um, stuff for hours at a time and he hasn't started watching Defenders yet so I was saying oh yeah watch it and he said is I is the Iron Fist guy is Danny any better and I said well he doesn't feel as terrible and then I watched episode 7 and I texted him just saying Danny's an idiot yeah yeah, like, mm. and I'm not going to go any further into it than that. Mm. But when you finish episode seven, I know exactly the Danny scene you're talking is about. A fucking but idiot! <laughs> I don't even need I, to look it up on IMDb. I know exactly the scene you're talking about, and, and I thought <laughs> exactly the same thing. Yeah. yeah, and I also have to make the comparison since we talked about it. I mean, come on, who didn't enjoy him as Loras Tyrell though in Game of Thrones? So, well, <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't watch Game of Thrones. Sweet so. Loras, come on, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, that's probably one, <laughs> probably one for Byron. No, no, the worst Tyrell. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Byron is uh, being rather quiet. I know. I'm just listening to all this right now. By- By- Byron doesn't enjoy Marvel. Uh, Netflix. By- Byron doesn't do the Marvel Netflix stuff. Yeah, I know. Mm. I, I figured, given that you're not into I'm, Marvel yeah. in general, so you're probably not going to search out the Netflix. Well, no, no. well it's a shame because I think you'd enjoy the the, the Netflix stuff more the, for the reasons you don't like the films. I think that's why you probably would like uh, the Netflix series because it's a bit more gritty and it's a bit more like you know street level. You know, I, I oh. would I would suggest. If like even if you're not sure about the others and really not that into like the superpower element stuff of it, watch Jessica Jones. 
Well, you say you that, Paul, but here's the thing, right? I mean, I watched recently Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and I really like that version. And my girlfriend, though, isn't so keen on Pride and Prejudice on Zombies. See, she likes the other version. She likes the original one that comes from the book and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, it's like different strokes for different folks. <laughs> <laughs> but you can just, tell her there just is... The, a... Just the Pride and the Prejudice, not so much the yeah. Zombies. But you can tell her that there is a Pride and Prejudice and Zombie book that she can read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Christmas is... Around the corner, against zombies. So <laughs> exactly okay. what to do. Yes. Yeah, Christmas is just around the corner. I know what to get her. Uh, <laughs> I know exactly how yeah. to handle this. Just, there you go. Yeah, just, just use sense and sensibility. Just, uh, just get a, just get her that and the graphic novel of Abraham Lincoln Vampire, Vampire Hunter. Hunter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Uh, um, <laughs> what was, I had another point to make, and now it's completely left me. Now That's okay. it's, completely, it's completely gone. Now we were going to do yeah. something. It feels like we started this conversation, Ben. Do you remember we sat down? We were going to do something. What was it? I think we were going to talk um, about Dunkirk. Oh yes. Well, <laughs> uh, right, um, well, I, well, while we're thinking about that, yeah, uh, I, I've been thinking about asking you guys. That, uh, obviously, this could be sort of in preparation for the Oscar thing we'll do next year but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like, do you, do you yeah. have any uh, unaffiliated with the Oscars in any way thing yes we'll uh, that's why I said yeah. the Oscars thing okay, it's, gotcha. not, it's not the Oscars okay. it's a thing like just you know trying to keep us lawsuit free here yes exactly okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, you boys haven't had any nice emails to help you about that <laughs> Uh, I haven't. Uh, have you guys had anything? <laughs> we that? haven't had anything. <laughs> we haven't come no. up with a pipeline yet from that. <laughs> Any official <laughs> correspondence? Uh, yeah. No uh, season desist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I was going to say like. Do you, do you happen to have any uh, uh, a favourite film you've seen this year, or like a worst one, like uh, so far? For me personally, I would have to say. Uh, best film I've seen this year would be split between either Logan at the beginning of the year or the one we're about to talk about, uh, Dunkirk two very very different films but uh, and we'll go into Dunkirk obviously in more detail in a minute but mm-hmm. I just felt like that was such a brilliant piece of cinema and I, everyone I spoke to who hadn't seen it I just said you know just go go, go and find the biggest screen you can and go and watch it, you know, and and and, and then and then go and, and and then go and watch it again because it was just such a fantastic piece of cinema. Um, Logan was also up there, really, as a, as a great film for me. Um, I, I have to say, I've not seen many films this year that I've really, really disliked. Um, I, I know you're split on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I really like that, but uh, there's not been many this year that I've I've really really disliked. I even had to go and see Despicable Me Three with my with my ch- uh, with my young daughter, and that was actually pretty good. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the Despicable Me has not been that bad. No. I was genuinely surprised that the, I I remember when the first trailer came out for the first one, and it was like, oh, here's another comedy for the kids, and then we ended up seeing it, and it was like. Where's all the comedy? Yeah, it's supposed to be a comedy, but it it wasn't in the slice. That was terrible marketing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> how about you? How about how, what 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 have you thought this year? Uh, uh you want to go first? Or uh, you? sure. Uh, I'll go. The the best thing I have seen this year. Um, it's kind of an indie darling, um, but it got quite a following, and it's called The Big Sick. Right. Um, okay. Do you guys know of this one? No, 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 I heard of that. Okay, so um, check it out. do you watch Silicon Valley at all? No, but I, I keep meaning to, which okay. doesn't help. Um, but, you know. It's uh, Kumail Nanjiani, stand-up comedian. Uh, he's the lead in it, and it's um, he. Um, you know, he's of course in Silicon Valley, but um, it's the semi-autobiographical story of how he met his wife, Emily Gordon, um, and they ran like the. Or, you know, she was like. I think showrunner or something for like the Nerd Melt showroom in LA for a while, um, and uh, she's a psychologist, all this stuff. But it's kind of the uh, story of how they met, fell in love, and she um, gets very, very sick, um, like as they break up, and it, it's just um, the best romantic comedy you're ever going to see, mm. hands down. Uh, it, it, I even hesitate to lump it into that genre because people automatically get it a sense of uh, what they're get going in for. Uh, it, it, there's an authenticity to it that you're not going to catch in any other film like it. Uh, 
it just rings true. Uh, like these are real people and real shit they're going through. Yeah, and it's not just a sluggish. I'm painting kind of a awful sluggish picture here, <laughs> just like deep emotion here. But there are some really good light moments. Um, it's just a fantastically done film. I think it's near perfection. Well, I tell a uh, lie because when I went to see mm-hmm. Dunkirk and Spider Man, I saw a trailer for this in both. And um, mm-hmm. I just didn't know it was called The Big Sick. And um, I thought both yeah. times, I thought that actually does look really, really good. And I should go I, and see that. But Yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. I think everyone should see this movie. Um, I need, I want to see it more times. Ray Romano is fantastic. Yeah, he looks good, as, actually. Uh, her dad and uh, Holly Hunter. Yep. Um, is, he's got a ton of uh, stand-ups to recognize in there, if you're, if you're a stand-up nerd like myself. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just utterly fantastic. Right, uh, right. Hang on a second, though. What's that? Uh, well, uh, no, not for you, but uh, Bear there. You said that you saw the trailer for this thing twice, thought it looked fantastic, and yet couldn't remember the name of it. Yeah, well, this is the thing. <laughs> and, and I was also going to say... I, not I fantastic you, enough to remember, but... Yeah. I thought you were going to say something else, because because my, my, my issue with myself was that I didn't go and see it. And, and this is, I think, the problem with these sorts of films, isn't it? Because cause nowadays, going to the cinema is a bit more of a, you know getting more expensive and we've all got families and children and stuff and it's like you know you you tend to sort of annoyingly avoid these films until they come out on dvd because you think well the ones i'm going to see in the cinema are going to be the big ones you know like the ones we're talking about dunkirk you know spider-man the, the big screen ones um and i'm annoyed with myself that you kind of default into that setting of thinking oh that's just a sort of standard rom-com obviously i'm completely wrong but that's kind of what you think when you see the trailer, you think, "Oh, well, I'll just, I'll just, I'll catch that in a year or two when it's on Amazon Prime or Netflix," you know. <laughs> Which obviously, I, I imagine a lot of people did. I, I, I wouldn't know what sort of money this film made, but um, I imagine it won't be close to what those big blockbusters make this, you know, these years. No, well, yeah, it didn't get a ton of screens. Like I had to go see it at an art house, you know, theater. Really. And uh, but I think it's like as of. Well, I haven't checked in a while, but it was rocking like a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that that's the end-all, be-all. No. Uh, but, you know, it says a little something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's very interesting. Good yeah. recommendation as um, well. But moving quickly, I, I won't dwell on this because we've done the episode on it. The worst film I've seen this year, at, at least if we're using film spotlight rules, yeah, uh sure. Expectations not met. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. Oh, two. there it is. There she blows. Yeah, just a mailed-in fan service bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're still mad about the. <laughs> they go better. No, they go. don't try to tug on these heartstrings and stuff. That's not what I want out of Guardians of the Galaxy. You're fun. <laughs> don't make this about fathers and sons and, and I'm weeping and openly in the theater and like <laughs> fuck you Marvel um, <laughs> but that that element aside it was like I said it was just an hour and 50 minutes of fan service and Drax is going to not understand things and <laughs> Baby Groot's going to be cute and I'm sorry I'm, I have jo- no joy in my life clearly but <laughs> yeah that's all I, yeah it's well documented go listen yes, to that it episode is, yes. <laughs> it was a very well documented episode I have to say I listened to it and <laughs> I had to switch it off because I was stressed <laughs> yeah. Understandable. Yeah. I won't go at all anymore, so yeah. Uh, um, I'm done. Paul. Uh, well, I'll take my one then. So, my favorite film so far this year, uh, I think, uh, in terms of sort of the opposite of what you were just saying, like, I went in with not, not too high expectations and came away loving it, would be Wonder Woman. Because. Really? That, that film. It it was one of, and I'll probably bring it up when we do our, our podcast at the beginning of next year, but that film has been the best cinema experience for me so far this year. And You know, was, I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, that is my number two. <laughs> yeah, so the it, it, yeah. Was, it was just so much fun, and obviously Gal Gadot as Diana Prince and mm. Wonder Woman was just brilliant I well mean, especially if you consider everything dc has done so far mm-hmm. and then they somehow made this <laughs> <laughs> well i agree with you on dc but i don't think i could disagree anymore with you on wonder woman well, 
So uh, enough, you're entitled to your own. We'll, we'll have a good argument about that. It come come January, February time. Okay, yeah, let's save it. I'm, yep, I'm gonna save up right, and train yeah. for that fight. So all right. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> uh, you will be a McGregor to my Mayweather. Let's just uh, <laughs> put it that way. And uh, but I, that is the last time I'll ever associate myself with that piece right. of shit human being Mayweather. But okay, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, I, I completely avoided that whole thing. I don't actually know what's, yeah. what's going on with that. But anyway, uh, yes, the worst film I've seen this year. Uh, if you if you want, you can go and listen to the Soiled Retin Cinema podcast episode that I ended up watching <laughs> this for, so that I could talk. Are we about just it cleverly something. plugging our podcast right now? No, 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 <laughs> no because no, uh, I'm I don't have enough time to go into no, it no, as yeah. I did on there. But yes, this is the. Um, the Scarlett Johansson Ghost in the Shell film and uh, as someone who is a fan of Ghost in the Shell like both the 1995 film and its sequel and the two series of the TV show plus the film that came out of that and the next series that they did which was called Arise when they did it um fuck that film Mm. (laughs) I mean just my god, they took everything that was good about Ghost in the Shell, took away the interesting bits, mixed it together in a blender, tipped it over onto some celluloid, and then put it out. Like, that's... <laughs> it. It's... Oh, it's bad. It's just... It's terrible. I, 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 like I said, I don't have enough time right now to go into just how bad that But throne spotting, you're on Greyjoy, isn't it? So there you go. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that's all. I, that, all there is to say about it, really. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, the, the only. If, if you take nothing else away from this podcast, d- don't see Ghost in the Shells. <laughs> <It's gonna go laughs> if you have seen it, somehow obtain a Men in Black neuralizer yes. so that you can forget you saw it. Yeah, it, it's even worth forgetting everything after you saw that film just, <laughs> to, just to get rid of it. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, okay, all right, mental note there, no yeah, ghost yeah. in show. Okay. No taken. <laughs> all right, no oh, ghost in show. Okay, uh, should I do mine then? Yeah, um, as well. Okay, so I saw, uh, there was a couple of things, I saw one movie that was a hangover from the year before, which I'd been really excited about and then was pretty disappointed in, which was Kong. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Skull Island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, didn't really Skull get Island. on with that, but that wasn't, the, that wasn't the problem. I managed to make it all the way through that one. But we did put on, at some point in the house, uh, Matt Damon in The Great Wall. Um, I'm not telling you, I'm telling you now, it was, it was unwatchable. Um, it was unwatchable. I'm not that surprised, yeah, it was to be honest. Un- really? Because it looked quite excellent. I'm so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was no uh, The Last Samurai? <laughs> I was actually going to say, when I first saw the trailer for it, it was like, oh, Matt Damon, and I was like... Did they watch The Last Samurai and go, we can do this again? But worse. <laughs> but, worse. Yeah. but worse. Go ahead, yeah. sorry, we're yeah. talking over here. No, that was that, was, that, was that. it just really... I mean, what, what, was there anything that worked about this, or... No. Just nothing? <laughs> no, yeah. part, no part of that movie, in any way, has its place anywhere. <laughs> in any, in any it should cease to exist, is what you're cinematic saying. Cinematic <laughs> integrity had all departed the building. Mm-hmm. A whole lot, so just don't leave. Just leave it well alone. Ghost in the uh, Shell, Great Wall. They can go in the same packaging and be dispatched into the vacuum of outer space. Uh, you know, I, I'm now just picturing like you're watching the panning shots of uh, the army, and you just see people with tape at the edge of their eyes, just like making sure they're the right shape. Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> but I can only hope if they're still making those DVD two packs that uh, Ghost in the Shell and the Great Wall will yes. be bound together for uh, yes. for eight bucks. You know, yeah. well, you I'm sure just solved Blu-ray a big marketing yeah. problem. <laughs> or a disc yeah, maybe got two maybe sides we to should it. start a company that creates these culturally inappropriate film two packs <laughs> uh, question is what would you mm, call that two I don't know pack, if that's the know? best uh, thing that I want to get involved hey, there are in certain there. As- yeah. there are certain areas of this uh-huh. country where that will sell very well my friend yes and I don't <laughs> want to make money off of those monsters so yeah <laughs> I think, and the disc could have two sides to it. So you just turn the disc over, and the movie's on the other side. So you save on your production cost. Ah, yeah, don't even make yeah. the box set good quality. No, you know, no make it make no, it low no. production. Do you remember, yeah, do you remember those DVDs that would, uh, yeah, be like yeah. widescreen and full screen. Yeah, side A, side yeah. B. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. it should have the same kind of packaging as a cheap cereal box. 
Yes, actually, it should come in a box of yeah. Wheaties. <laughs> yes, you can put it in with the soup. Yes, yes. And, well, and on top of it being double sided, it doesn't even have the word side A and side B typed on it. It's just completely blank. So yeah, it's just, it's just it's written in a it shop on it. You don't care. Fuck it. Just put a side in and press play. You obviously have no taste. Just <laughs> fuck it. There you go. <laughs> press play. Yeah, you there don't you care go. what side this is, what movie it is. <laughs> obviously, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As for as for good movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, there are. <laughs> we were going somewhere with this conversation. Um, uh, yeah, I did like Logan. The one I'm kind of excited about at the moment hasn't come out yet. I'm waiting for the remake of uh, Stephen King's uh, It. I'm sort of seeing what's going to happen with that. Yeah, uh, that, I mean that looks genuinely scary. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, Boys, I, I sound very, it, very quiet. On me. Re- what's wrong? I remember hearing that the. Uh, um, the guy playing Pennywise had to apologise every day to the kids because he did genuinely frighten the shit out of them. <laughs> Isn't that a good sign for a movie, though? Yeah, yeah we're we're I, on the right track I, if that's if that's the case. You know, because the last time I heard a story like that was the original 1977 Alien, where no one was allowed to see the creature. They had it kept in a separate little unit and one poor old janitor was cleaning around at the end of one studio day and opened the door where it was kept and it fucking nearly had a heart attack when it saw this fucking thing oh nearly killed him <laughs> yeah um so it reminds me of that story so um that's a good omen I think. yeah yeah i i'm genuinely looking forward to it i mean nothing for me is going to replace the Pure camp value of Tim Curry. Oh no! Sure. Yeah, Tim Curry. Because I mean, yeah. you, I can't yeah. see this version of Pennywise sitting on top of the railing at the library, just going wah wah. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. Hopefully, it's written for the actor. You know, yeah, the actor is able to. Yeah, I, I do think something a little different. I genuinely think they approach this one saying, "Okay, we're just not doing camp. Like, well, we're yeah. going <laughs> not away. doing camp. I mean, yeah, that's." <laughs> Because if, if you even try to do camp, you're just going to have so many people pissed off that you didn't mm-hmm. just get Tim Curry back to do it. Like it's just, it's, you know, it's a losing battle. Well, Especially yeah, it after, would not have worked for Heath Ledger to do Jack Nicholson's Joker. You know, yeah. it's like. I mean, it's, yeah. especially after the Rocky Horror Picture Show remake that they did up for mm-hmm. TV, that was um, a, just. Not as good. That's all. It, it just wasn't as good as the original. I've not seen that. I didn't. I didn't know there was a remake of the Rocky Horror Show. That that would be interesting to watch. Because I love the yeah, original it, film. It's, um, uh, Laverne Cox plays Frankenfurter. Um, I don't know if you know who Laverne Cox is. She is the transgender actress who was in Orange Is the New Black. Uh, oh, I didn't see that. She. I was like, she's not terrible, but she's not Tim Curry again. Uh, the only person that does. Uh, as good a job as the previous person to play them is uh, and now I'm blanking on his name uh, he, he plays Eddie in it and he's uh, he was the singer that toured with Queen. Adam Lambert Thank you, yes that's mm. the, yeah. he plays Eddie and he does it very well <laughs> so <laughs> Oh, I'll have to check that out. I, I, that actually sounds quite because I quite like Laverne Cox and I quite liked her role in a. I mean, obviously you're giving it not the greatest review. But, well, well, no, but, I, I'm saying it's not as good as the original Rocky Horror Picture Show. But I'm quite but a fan not to of say it's terrible. But, Orange is the New yeah. Black and, and Laverne Cox's role in it, so I, I'd definitely be worth. I'd definitely be up for checking that out. Actually, I think, yeah, mm-hmm. give it a shot. You yeah. may enjoy it more than I did. So there you go. I'll let you know. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well. <laughs> Are we ready yeah. to get a, yeah. to the matter at hand here? Well, uh, I mean, I'm sure we could kill another 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we well, can uh, take restroom minutes. breaks and things like that, sure. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, we, we probably should get rolling. back to Dunkirk. Yeah. Okay. Or get to Dunkirk. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we've got to get there and then get back. To <laughs> well, to start so off, we apparently it takes 19 this? hours to get there from from the coast of England because uh, I just read on IMDb that Christopher Nolan took the journey on a boat with his wife. I, yeah, I read that as well. Yeah, 19 uh, hours it would take. So that's what we're up against, guys. <laughs> okay, we could just have to come in at just under 19. <laughs> yes, all right, we can do that. Done. Yeah, and then and then somehow go back in time and give this to him to listen to during mm-hmm. the boat ride. Yes. Well, we are going to be operating this podcast on three separate timelines, yes. so <laughs> we, will, <laughs> we will weave it all together beautifully. Yes. Um, how how should we start this one? Uh, I don't know. That's uh, 
<laughs> yeah, did, uh, yeah. Did you guys have a specific starting point you wanted to go from? Not really. Well, not for me. I don't know if Byron does, but I mean, I, I, I would just be interested to know how everybody felt to begin with, like how, how everyone, how everyone experienced it. You know, how, did everyone enjoy it? Not enjoy it? Uh, why don't we start there? Uh, all right. Well, well, why don't you go first since you've already said that it's uh, one of your favourite films of the year. So yeah. Far, well, so. I mean, okay, I mean, just to reiterate what I said before. I mean, I, I, I just thought it was. I mean, obviously, I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan anyway, so I think that helps because you go in kind of with a with a semi biased view because you're just like I, I love what this director does and I, I enjoy everything that he touches. So I'm going to go in. If I'm honest, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know a lot about the story before going in so I kind of did a little bit of history lesson before going into the cinema to kind of find out what the plot was about but obviously the film I think did quite a good job of telling us the story um, but I, I just thought it was phenomenal I mean I think it's a phenomenal story anyway it's a very it's a very heavy story very poignant and obviously it's not it's not an easy film to watch it's uh, it's reflective and it's poignant and it's quite heavy and you know and it's a very very stressful hundred minutes you know but I just thought in terms of a piece of cinema it was one of the best made pieces of cinema I've seen in a long time it, you know it's obvious that he wants to have a very active role in the production of everything not just the not just the script and the way it's it's shot but you know the sound I mean I thought the sound design and the music was in, in, incredible and then the way it looked it's you know mostly shot in IMAX it, it looked fantastic and I just thought for a piece of cinema that's got to like tick a box as this is a demonstration of what someone can do in 100 minutes to make a very very good story you know better with with the uh, the industries around him you know if that makes sense absolutely yeah yeah, uh, yeah and uh, what do you want to go first or do you want me to go uh, first uh, sh- uh, okay yeah I'll go again um, okay. it's been a, been a while since I've seen this movie uh, I was trying to get a refresher watch in but uh, it's probably been five or six weeks since I watched this um and I think we're probably all going to be on the same page here as having really, I don't know, enjoyed is the right term for this yeah. type of film, but having really watched, uh, having <laughs> having been happy that we watched this film. How about that? Put it that way, um, because it is a unique film experience, um, and of course, having to be the Debbie Downer and naysayer <laughs> of the group, um, I am saying that yes, this is of course an excellent film. But I'll just get this part out of the way so we can move on into the, all the great stuff. Um, I, you know, of course, this is a war film, so it's difficult. You know, the, the, one of the major critiques of Nolan and his writing, and you know, not being able to write women or have women portrayed accurately in film and of course there's like I don't think there's a shot of maybe two nurses or something in this Uh, (laughs) but uh, where I'm getting at is I I would like to see Nolan eventually do something that is anti-Nolan if that makes any sense Uh, as much as I enjoy the playing with time and perception and all of that and of course he's given ample examples that he is the master of that I want to see him do something completely out of his comfort zone and still knock it out of the park. And <laughs> good point. That's but that point. being said, that being said, I still, of course, love this movie. It's not one of those that you're, hey, you got a free afternoon, let's pop in Dunkirk and get depressed for <laughs> no. <laughs> but it is, yeah. Yeah, Dunkirk, but it is <laughs> like you said, this is going to win sound design. It has to win sound design. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, score, it's. I mean, depending, we'll see what else comes out, but um, it is like 100 minutes of uncomfortable, tense, just uncomfortability, just, just shock and not being at ease. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, obviously, well, well, well worth having seen and do not regret watching this. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I will. Uh, I will mirror most of what you said there. Yeah, uh, yeah that the one word I said to Brian before we uh, started this. That the one word that I came away with was tense. Cause yeah. The entire film. Uh, you, you could argue that this film is the story of one of the most unlucky soldiers in the war, because Tommy, he, like he gets away. The rest of his 
troop or whoever he's with uh, killed he gets to the beach he gets on something then that's taken away from him and then he gets somewhere else that's taken away from him he's stuck in the sea he's back on the beach like it's just <laughs> it's just this one guy trying to leave and he's unable to and I, I get the impression that's that was the case for a lot of them though and I think that was I, I feel that was the story he was trying to tell in the sense that it was easier probably just to focus on this one person and 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 for us to imagine that this is probably what happened with almost all of them <laughs> instead well, of just yeah, you know the handful that, of people especially especially given that his character's name Tommy is the nickname for the English soldier back then like right. that's, mm. that's what he's supposed to be the average soldier and he's just yeah. stuck in this thing and yeah, it, it was, it was what it was an epic. Is what this was. Like it was just watching the whole thing unfurl, and then, yeah, you know, when the different timeline thing came into play again, and I did get a bit of a flash to Memento. Like, mm. oh, okay, we're going, we're kind of going this route with it. Uh, but yeah, and and I I enjoyed that because it wasn't then just a straightforward. They're on the beach. They're not. And all that, and you got to see. It's almost as if each, and it was like each different time that you saw, was told from the perspective of someone standing there and going through it. So obviously you had the, the, the beach, the mole time was basically Tommy. The, the boat one was the family that came mm -hmm. out, and then yep. the air one was from yes. the pilots. And I yeah. thought that was a fantastic way of going about that. So I, I, yes, I. I am glad I watched it. it. It is very difficult to say the word enjoy about this yeah. film, given the subject matter. But yes, uh, I did enjoy watching this film mm -hmm. as an experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Byron, what about you? Mm. Well, this, for me, didn't feel like a normal movie. Um, and it also didn't feel like a normal war movie because of the way that the whole film was balanced. And I kind of like that. The first tip I got that this wasn't going to be quite a normal film actually came from the trailers because the trailer in the UK and probably the US wasn't done the way that trailers are normally done. They released a series of little clips of little five to ten second clips of moments and that would be it and so you'd get these little short blasts of, of Dunkirk trailer and not anything more where, rather than a conventional three minute or whatever or minute and a half trailer whole, telling a snapshot of the movie there was just little bursts. Did you guys get that in North America as well? I think that was the original. I mean, I, I, I the remember the original teaser. I don't remember in front of what film, but just them crowded on the pier with a, uh, you know, an enemy plane just buzzing yeah. over, you know, yeah, and that, just everyone starting to duck. Yeah, yeah, that it was, was just like a twenty-second. That was the first teaser. trailer they did, yeah. and then after that. Uh, it was only for like a month I think it was mm. I think uh, they had like a minute long they, well they, they had things where it would be so you sit down in the cinema to watch whatever yeah. and then you have like eight trailers that you watch beforehand and what they would do is they would have as you were saying like five to ten seconds and then a trailer and then a trailer and then five to ten seconds yes. of this and then a trailer that. and then a trailer and then that, that. Like that. They, they did it for about a month Yep. and then I think they realised that American audiences didn't want that, so <laughs> they went back to the actual trick. <laughs> really? That's very interesting, because yeah. that, when I was watching movies and that style of doing a trailer, which I'd never seen a trailer done like that, that was way more effective. Yeah. I was way more bought into this movie from that than long minute and a half, two minute trailers. Um, yeah. So that worked incredibly well on me. At the point I'd seen like two or three of those clips, I was in. I was on board, I was ready to do the movie. Uh, for sure, like committed. When's it coming out? Get it ready. I'm, I'm gonna take my money already. So that method worked really well for me. Interesting to hear that it perhaps wasn't so successful in North America. I I think it just it's just like, what, you, you'll find very much that people in America they like things a certain way and they don't want things to change. <laughs> as, uh, as the min minority here, the okay. <laughs> I I can only say that that initial teaser. I did not need to see more than that. I yes, was, no, like yeah. you said, I was ready. Yes, take, yeah. shut up and take my money. Yeah, I was definitely yeah. at that point with the movie when I saw, and that's just the first time I've really seen a movie trailer done that way. And I, I think I posed the question to Bears, like, is that how it's going to be now with some movies? Are they going to take this on board and try to do trailers like this? Because if so, that really worked for me. I don't know if it will catch on or not. Maybe it's could a new you, way of doing. Could trailers. you imagine if every film did that? 
It'd be too so busy. You, you end up going to see a film and you have what 20 minutes of multiple five to ten second clips from yeah. every film you would just come away just with a patchwork of scenes and just go what we really what confusing, happened? the problem is you wouldn't know what was for you it'd start to meld into one and i think that's why it can't on mass work i don't think it would work mass. i imagine that a, a slot like that would probably cost more for their marketing so it's like we, oh, yeah. we, we said i can't even remember the film we went to see where we saw that trailer because it was with you um but which which i think says volumes about the fact that we can all remember the teaser trailer but i can't remember the <laughs> i can't remember the film i went to see all the all the trailers that were in between the little short burst but i remember having the conversation saying you know like was it wonder woman it probably was wonder woman yeah it was un- unfortunately <laughs> um it, uh, yeah and, and i just remember thinking we, we you you could do that for every film but it would have to be you know what just one trailer <laughs> one film Per 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 fil- uh, you know per per day. If you, you know what I mean, like you couldn't all do it. it. It would be too convoluted. Do you guys? When I say this, when I said this didn't feel like a normal film, and it didn't feel like a normal war film. Did you understand what I meant when I said that? Uh, yes, it's definitely not. Like I mean, I guess the typical example would be like something like Saving Private Ryan. Uh-huh. Story starts here. We move through. You know, you get the wide scope. This is a very insular event, of course. You know, it's, I guess it's it's kind of the way this movie had to be told. Yeah, and, um, and there's very, very, very little dialogue, which for a like, for want of a better term, summer blockbuster, mm-hmm. like that doesn't happen. <laughs> so yeah, like, it, and it was really fun. Yeah, I, I defy anyone to just right now name three lines from the movie. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, U-boat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, it's an interesting. One. But that's not the point. You know, the point is the witnessing what's happening here. Yeah, I know, right? So that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at like where the audience is in the movie. You know, like it felt like you were on the beach all the time, mm-hmm. and I think sometimes it feels like you're watching something from a distance in the way they film things, where he's like you're. And if, if ever there was an argument for surround sound, this movie would probably be it. Definitely, that's how I felt. <laughs> yes, I think, yeah, this is exhibits A through Z. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this would be a good argument for that. But what I, what I liked about the movie was that most of the conventional journey, the hero's journey, from everything from Star Wars to Willy Wonka is a main character going on some kind of journey. And along they along the way... You know, they meet certain characters, they meet like a leader, hero type character that there's a role model and they have a battle with good and evil. It's the same, it's very, very similar sort of formula through different movies, Wonder Woman. They all have this character who's on a journey, meets someone that they check in with, go on the adventure, you understand. Whereas this movie, the setup of it was not one person, one story, like it, for example, Tom Hanks and Saving Private Ryan, which we just brought out. You know, one guy's journey to find this guy and then get him out of there. It was a presentation of lots of little sections all put together. So everyone, no one had a more important story than the guy next to him, if, it's the, if that makes sense. So the guy who's running the evacuation, the senior officer isn't more important in the story than Tommy or the guys that are hiding in the boat. It's all very e- interestingly weighted. Did you, did you notice that? Yeah, and it's, uh, it, and it's, really, it's really cool to see when films like this come out and they do something so totally different i mean yeah you said that this normally the the plot is the main character going on a journey right and the plot of this one is the main character trying to go on a journey (laughs) trying to get the hell out of that yeah the the journey is the end yeah Yeah. yeah. okay but here's the thing guys but who's the main character it says this is another thing i want to talk about so yeah this is what i found so interesting terror Terror is the main character at right, this right. point. Because yeah. you yeah. don't even see the enemy. You don't, the Germans you don't see until the very end when they come to escort Tom Hardy out of there. So no, yeah, it, exactly. They're no, a faceless they, enemy. Exactly. David no, so it's there weird you because He's you've the got, main character. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you've got a, a movie based on real life events with the biggest baddie of the 21st, sorry, the 20th century, and you don't mm-hmm. see it. And it's like, wait, what? How, how did this movie get. How did anyone agree they were going to make this movie when Christopher Nolan was on the phone to the studio? And the first thing that the studio says, um, 
Chris, there doesn't appear to be any talking for the first 15 minutes, mate. Yeah, there's no, there's yeah. no talking. And Frank, and oh, who's our it. big bad German? Oh, there isn't one. Well, don't worry, Chris, because, you know, like this. It's, it's, we're gonna, it's gonna be a big action-packed three hours. Yeah, well, about that, guys. See, it's not gonna be three hours. <laughs> there's gonna be a lot. Of, <laughs> you must have been thinking what the studio were thinking at this point. And then it gets on to, well, it's okay, because we've got some really big action characters, you know, big characters on screen, Kenneth Branagh. And it's like, well, yeah, actually, they're all gonna be playing little, little parts, so don't, I wouldn't focus on one person in particular. And to which they would then say, well, it's okay, because if everything else fails, at the very least, we've got the handsome face of Tom Hardy on screen. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to say, well, actually... <laughs> Apparently you have not been keeping up on your Tom Hardy film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was covered after the first line. So anyway... It's an in- that's yeah, what I'm saying. It's an interesting I, movie to try and ex- if you'd ex- written it down and explained it to the studio, they must have said, "No way. There's just no way we're doing this." What? Well, no, no it, it clearly went like this. Christopher Nolan walked into the studio and said, "I've got an idea," and the studio went, "Done." Like, yeah. that, that's yeah, as far yeah. as he had You're to like, go. Oh, wait, let us look at your box office returns. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. How about uh, the one the thing that, the, oh, okay, that gave the the biggest amount of derision that came from news from this film, which is the fact that Harry Styles is in it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did anyone realize who he was when it, it took was me a it? moment? Because I, it, it was one of those things that, regrettably, was weighing on my mind. As it, in, not in the front, but in the back of my mind, is when the hell's Harry Styles going to pop up in this thing? <laughs> I tell you what. And when he did, it took me a minute. And my friend was like, "Oh yeah, that's him." I'm like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they, I completely forgotten that Harry Styles had been. When I sat down to watch it, because it had been a while, mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I'd forgotten he was in it. And then it wasn't until the film was almost over, and I was going, "Oh, oh yeah, that, that's that singer guy." <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's about it. Uh-huh. Better think, done than the Ed Sheeran cameo. Let's say that. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a really, really smart move from from Harry Styles, and I think he'll do. So stupidly well off the back of it because I remember like was it probably a year year and a half ago when they announced this film and they announced that he was going to be in it and he was getting a lot of criticism and everyone said oh god Harry Styles is going to be in a Christopher Nolan film and I said and I, I remember saying to my wife back then I said I bet you he'll do really well in it because an actor like that well he's not an actor you know at the time he was a, a, a boy boy band star you know he, he, he I remember him expressing an interest in saying that I want to make the move into movies because the band was splitting up and all that and someone like that must have been sent you know thousands and thousands of scripts because he's you know the biggest star in the world in music at one point you know everyone's going to want to put them in his movie and you know it takes a brave man for him to go you know what no I'm going to say no to all those I'm going to take this because he's he's under the wing of Christopher Nolan he's, 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 he's in good hands he's sharing the screen with Kenneth Branagh Mark Rylance Tom Hardy and you know he's made an he's made an impression on that film. I, I I I think he was great. I think it was a very very good choice that he made. You know, you compare it to someone like um, you know The Rock, Dwayne Dwayne Johnson. You know, who I really enjoy, but his films aren't exactly highbrow, are they? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no. no I'm he takes the first script that lands on his now. desk, no. and he goes, "This is what I'm doing. This looks fun, and this is the one that's." highest paid and you know that that's kind of the opposite end of the, the story of someone who wanted to break into film and and then just going look here's a script do you want to do it yes i do you know and and i i admire harry styles for going do you know what i'm gonna wait and, and this is this is going to be the film for me and i bet you he's going to have a relatively lucrative career off the back of this now. Mm. yeah i i think so <laughs> it's uh, it, like i said i was i kind of forgotten he was in it and I, I was just happy watching him on screen because he did a very good job, especially with the the sort of turn towards the end when he starts just being like, "Well, this guy's not talking." Like, what are he? Like, yeah, uh, I mean, I will say for you know for, from that point of recognition that L. It's Harry Styles. I quickly dipped right back into the narrative of the film. Yeah. Like, it wasn't sitting there with me, okay, I'm watching Harry Styles. Yeah, Harry yeah. Styles. Like, no, it, it, the character was pulled off, and I was just caught back up into the going and on. Um, uh, did, did anyone have a favorite uh, actor slash character? I mean... Mark Rylance. You either got to go with Kenneth Branagh or Mark Rylance, I don't know, at least in my opinion on this one, but, yeah. <laughs> I just, that- I can't, I can't, I would in, I would watch Mark Rylance all day every day if I could. I, I just mm. I, I love that actor. I love that man. 
and he's just yeah. he's just got something so weird and wonderful about him, so watchable. And um, I rewatched Bridge of Spies recently, and he's just and that's the one he won an Oscar for for best supporting yeah. actor, and it, he's just he knocks it out of the park. And he's and again he's he's only in about thirty minutes of the film, two and a half hour film. He's he's not really in it, and he's just so completely watchable. See. <sighs> Yeah, I would rather see him get nominated and win for this than Bridge of Spies. Really? <laughs> but I mean, I do love his acting, but I do think that was one of the weakest best actor wins or best supporting actor, I should say. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, don't get me wrong, I do love him, but it uh, yeah, I think we probably tried to this territory, but it, you know, it was such a subdued performance, which I guess can be tough to kind of rate without a wide range of emotion but yeah yeah it was some great acting of course but i don't know i just that's neither here nor there but i would rather see him you know get nominated because this i thought was excellent um at least his performance here yeah yeah Yeah, I, i definitely agree and uh I honestly thought Killian Murphy, just based on the name, mm-hmm. like, I thought he was going to have a bigger role mm-hmm. than what he had. But uh, like, I, it was always fun to see this, like in a a word that doesn't exist anymore, a shell shocked soldier. Mm-hmm. Just especially when he started to realise that they he wasn't going home; he they was were going, going back, back into the fray. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, I like I just I really enjoyed. I mean, I guess I just enjoyed the boat. I think the boat was my favorite of the three. Yeah. That was yeah when I was really tapping into it the most was yeah because I mean the the, the beach was just so tense and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say unenjoyable, but just you know you you really don't have a whole lot of thought or I guess that is the right way to say it. You know, yeah. you are just so wrapped up in what's happening on that beach that yeah. you're enjoy a little breather there on the boat yeah. that isn't quite as horrifying <laughs> for a moment. Well, I, I, even on top of that, I just, those groups of actors on that boat, I, I, that, I mm-hmm. liked watching them the most yeah. out, of, mm-hmm. out of all of them. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm including Michael Caine's cameo as well. So there you go. <laughs> oh, his vocal yeah. Yeah, exactly. cameo. I was surprised yeah. to read that. I wish, I wish I'd known that going into the film because I, I would have liked to have picked it out but obviously uh, I read that after and I was like oh mm-hmm. uh, I would have liked to have yeah like how did I miss one of the most recognisable voices in the world oh, you, <laughs> right, uh, did you not know that was no that? not until I didn't know that until after yeah oh no the second he started talking I was like they got Michael Caine in this uh, what <laughs> you have one Englishman of the podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> so talking about, what did you guys think of the end uh, scenes there where they were on the train and stuff back in the UK uh, when it all sort of, sort of resolved what did you about that uh, well I I, I kind of liked seeing it uh, especially you think it was necessary those scenes at the end or like was it the story that needs to be there or I don't feel it was 100% it, necessary. it felt like a studio note to me yeah uh, uh, I mean the conversation between the soldiers where like he's saying we're going to get lynched you know this right because obviously the soldiers they know that what they were doing, just trying to leave, that's not what was expected of a soldier. Like that, to all of the soldiers trying to get away, they're cowards. Like they feel like they're cowards. They're just yeah. trying to escape. Whereas back home, what's happening is everyone knows that they couldn't go anywhere, and everyone knew that we had to get them back. So. Like it's the two different dynamics, and so it was good. They should have ended it when the train pulled into the station. Yeah, I agree. I have to and s- then having that extra stuff go on, like I, I thought it was a bit too much. But not, you know, n- nothing necessarily against the film. Yeah, there, picking just, an, uh, on an excellent film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, f- I felt like the, the the one my one issue I had with the film was just before that actually, where I wish they'd made a bigger thing of of. The, the domestic boats coming through to, to rescue everyone. I, you know, I know they made, like, uh, quite a big thing of it in the film, but I just felt like that needed a much bigger impact than it had. N- you know, knowing the story of, the, of what happened in real life, of, of, you know, how many people pulled together to make that happen, I just, I, I, I felt like it kind of got swamped out a little bit, and I don't feel like it, it really told that 
told that story as well as it could have done. But again, as you say, it's nitpicking over a, a great film. <laughs> it's just obviously that was probably the one bit in the whole film that I thought I probably would have changed that, and I wish I'd. I wish there was a bit more involved in it. Well, just wondering, did you guys? I haven't seen it, but did you see the 1958 version of Dunkirk movie? Did that? Did you guys ever get that? No, no, I can't say I've I'd seen that one. No, uh, no, no, I didn't see it either. Is I was that wondering. also called Dunkirk? Or? Yeah, Dunkirk, 1958 Dunkirk, um, starring Richard Attenborough. And oh yeah. Hmm. So I don't know if it's worth. It. I'm tempted to watch it, you know, just to sort of. Mm -hmm. It will probably feel completely different to this movie. I think the original is in black and white by the looks of the, the footage that they've got pictures. Yeah. Of. Mm -hmm. um, so it could feel like quite di quite uh, quite different. But I guess I'm always impressed by watching these movies and seeing them pull out all of the props. I don't just mean the original old weaponry, but I mean all of the the ships and the planes and I guess the costuming you can kind of get. Yeah to grips with that you can you can make the costuming but when it comes to things like ships and actual aircraft and, and that level of attention of detail when Tom Hardy's in the cockpit I just kind of a bit fascinated by how they get to that level of detail with things and just make it look like it's really authentic you know that's that was pretty well, that was pretty awesome being in the cockpit with him of the aircraft you know it, well uh, I, I don't know how much you know about the making of this film but he genuinely did get World War Two era boats and planes yeah. and he yeah, used the those. Spitfires so, and yeah, the, yep. so I think when you're in the cockpit with him you are in the cockpit mm -hmm. of a Spitfire. Yeah. And Nolan wrote in one so he knew how it felt to film. You know, so he, he, yeah. Yeah. It's it, crazy. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, when Leo did for uh, <laughs> Uh, why am I blanking on the name of Revenant? Revenant? No, uh, no Revenant. Yeah, yeah like, went, you know, he just went out and did this stuff. It's like, is you is you're going to make a film that is going to be gritty and real, and like needs to feel like it genuinely did, like yeah, as close to reality as possible. There's only one way to really do that. <laughs> yeah, and that's to actually do it. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> yeah. Yeah, too much CG would have just completely removed you yeah. <laughs> from the emotion of this film, yeah. Yeah, so do you think that, do you guys think this film is um, one that can be watched at home and appreciated as much as on the cinema screen? Or I, ooh, go ahead, yeah. I don't know, I'm just Take putting that out there, because some movies lend themselves really well to home cinema, but some movies you kind of, you kind of need this, sorry, yeah, for home viewing, and some movies you do mm -hmm. really probably want to see it on the big screen. Where do you think this fits in, in that? I think the best way to see this is, I think, I don't know if it was a Bear or a Byron who said this, but which of you, but the biggest screen possible with the best sound system possible. Um, that is not to say that you won't be able to take away some things from a home viewing, um, if that's the only way you can do it. Uh, you know, like we were saying, you know, families and all that stuff, you can't get up to the theater as much as you'd like. But if you are able to, if you can find this at still at a discount theater, do yourself the favor and see this mm. in... Yeah, with some other people on a big screen, immerse yourself in that sound and the visuals yeah uh, yeah, yeah. I, that's I, the best way to see this i do think obviously it's like that's the best way to do it but i think you will have an equivalent if let's say you can let's say you have a 4k blu-ray player mm -hmm. and you have a 4k tv like, yeah mm -hmm. uh, as big a size as possible preferably yeah. but let's say you have that and you have yourself a a surround system which has a good base yeah, <laughs> I I think having it more up close like that mm -hmm. will be as good as going to cinema to see it. But like I said, it it is something maybe five percent of people that will watch this film will have access to. Like, you, but the other you're going to need all of that. The other mm -hmm. argument is, of course, is a film like this is generally not like. Not many people will want to rewatch this, you know. I, I'm, That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I saw it, but it's a bit like Schindler's List, which it, don't get me wrong, is a phenomenal film. But I've watched yeah. it once, 
and I and I don't really want to watch it again. And you're good on it, yeah. Because oh, it's, well, no, it's too sad, you know. Really? I mean, yeah. So it's tough to like get the family or your significant other on a rare movie night and say, "Let's watch Dunkirk." Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, party, party <laughs> time. when we could watch Austin Powers again. Yeah, or you know, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you speak for yourself. I think Ellery's ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, let you know what she thinks. Yeah, <laughs> but for us, yeah, yeah, that's night. your two hours of date night or whatever. You know, whatever you got without the kids it's tough to sell this film in that scenario yeah, I, unless your partner is adding to films exactly so, uh, yeah. yeah but but if you want some escapism this isn't the film <laughs> <laughs> at least yeah. not for 2017 is that, escapism is that pun intended <laughs> no man it was not but yeah mm-hmm. uh, um, yeah I, I do think I know I will watch this film again but I have no idea when. I, say, I don't know that I will. I like, want I, to, but yeah. there's so many other things. I think this is definitely a film that down the line, like, assuming my daughter ends up enjoying film, mm-hmm. this is going to be one of the ones where I say, oh, okay, so your son to like film? Right, I've got yeah, Jurassic Park. You're going to be watching that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to be watching The Shawshank Redemption. Just like there's no no ifs and or buts about that. You're watching. You're grounded it. if you don't watch it. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you're a lot older, you'll be watching Sin City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Much yeah. older, you'll be watching A Clockwork Orange. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Even older. Uh, but no, I I think uh, especially like let's take when she's learning about history at school. I think this will be a beautiful film to put on and just be like, yeah, this was World War Two. This mm-hmm. was what it was like. So. <laughs> it's a very well told, yeah, very well told document, isn't it? I wanted to just take a minute, and um, I don't know if this will interest anyone, but I wanted to just take a minute and talk about the score because um, I was sitting in that cinema thinking this score, it for me is something like what Jaws was. You know, it's that it was that revolutionary to me. It was it was so different and interesting, and obviously I was noticing it. So I don't know if that's particularly a good score because they say you know the best scores are the ones you don't notice, but. I was noticing the fact that, you know, they're running across a beach and you're hearing one solo violin, you know, playing one note and then gradually another one comes in and gradually another one comes in and then that's mixed with a bunch of like really metallic-y sounding synths and I just think this is a really revolutionary, weird score that I just thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, and I also, you might have seen this if you read the IMDb trivia, Brian. Um, yeah. they, they, they mixed in a load of the... Uh, sound effects of his ticking clock you know to, to get yep, that sort of sense of urgency watch, yeah. no and watched, again yeah. I just think stuff like that man that's just absolutely blinding and genius you know and, and we don't get enough of that in, in films you know where that much thought and attention is going into the score you know just the score not not you know all the all the, the stuff that you see and it, you know it, it, I, I thought it was really impressive I don't know how you guys sit with listening to film scores, but I'm I'm always a fan of it, you know. Oh no, those were some of my very first CD purchases way back when were film scores before I ever bought any like artists. So yeah, I, I always pay attention to the score, and I think it's impossible to separate this out from the film. It's such yeah. a part of the experience. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I I always think when it comes to film like this where like oh that's uh, really important i almost want to run an experiment where i see the film with mono for the sound mm. like i want to see exactly how much of this is the score holding it up or if it's like the film itself is like as still as good i mean obviously sound influences your film viewing so yeah. you can't just what this couldn't be the silent era dunkirk because <laughs> it just wouldn't work mm-hmm. although it would turn it into a farce wouldn't it everyone turning around and then just cuts to black with the right just oh no a plane <laughs> and then comes mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Um, but oh. but yeah, yeah. I, I didn't notice the score that much myself uh, but uh, being partially deaf the that side of thing doesn't affect me as much but no, definitely sound design the sound of those planes yeah just like that is what I take away yeah. from this film it's just the whine of the engines uh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, those things coming in it it was yeah it was stunning 
stunning work from these guys. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it definitely put you right on the uh, right in there, right in the movie. And I think that's a, that's one of the big things, isn't it? If you're do, doing a movie of this nature, is try to get the audiences into the story as you can. I don't know if there's an argument for future cinema where the the way the screen works is different, and you can really film, and you really can present. I don't know a cinematic landscape that would almost be. I don't know if you guys ever had those things with the. Uh, what was it? Very early. Um, the virtual reality. The virtual reality. I think I'm yeah, yeah, I think it's like, so, a, yeah. like a headset where you put the headset and wherever you look, as you can see a different part of the screen. Yeah. But this would have been one yeah. of those things where if you could, then the next level of cinema, whatever that's going to be, it's probably not going to be uh, 3D. It's probably going to be a screen that goes a bit further around or something like that, where you've got a different. You can look and you can see more that's happening. Hey man, I definitely think that's coming. You know, we've got we've got 360 cameras now, and we've got we've yeah. got you know headsets to attach to your phone, and you know this is this is the way for it. And you know you've got games that do that. I, I think it's only a matter of time before we get a film that is that experience. You know, some something that's been shot in 360 degrees, and you can you know you can turn around and see the plane behind you or something. You know, it's interesting. I, mean, I don't know if it's going to be confusing from a storytelling point of view or good for certain minute moments in the movie. I don't know. I find it quite fascinating to see if it'd be possible, but this would have been an interesting exercise in doing it. Yeah. Well, I, I think maybe what they could do is you have headset and then you have the option of jumping in and out of that. Uh, for instance, like the scene that was in the trailer of all the people on the bridge yep. and then you hear the plane, they turn around and duck. Yep. Imagine if, at that point, you have the option of jumping into a guy in the middle of the bridge. Yeah. And then you can turn around and watch yeah. the plane coming and duck it's with a everyone else. Like, yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I, I think it would only uh, really no, work no. if it was no. like 30 seconds options at a time rather than the whole film. Because I think a, a lot of people would probably say, like, because you have gimmicks like that at you know Disney World, Universal Studio type theme park where you have those sorts of things to do and then I think if you were to do an hour and 40 minutes two hours and 30 minutes of that uh, people would be having headaches they'd be throwing up like I think the technology is not quite there <laughs> yeah, yet uh, <laughs> I don't know call me a purist but I am not all on board for too much technology getting into <laughs> film like I've always been so against 3D um, what about? I love how you know that no one still shoots on film. This was, I, I believe, seventy millimeter, so of course it looks amazing. But um, I don't want that. Like, when, if we keep adapting like these new technologies into this medium, I'm afraid that's. An, I'm afraid it becomes an unrecognizable medium to what I know and love that is film. What about augmented reality? Type thing mm. where, like, uh, like, so uh, you, like you I said, it's a different experience, it's not film, it's okay. not a movie. Well, I know, but like, so you wear glasses, right? So you would just have regular glasses or like the 3D glasses mm -hmm. on your head, and then you would have the option of turning it on and off as you wish, so it's not there, but like, you would be watching the cinema screen, and then if you turned it on, like, the screen would extend further, so you would have a wider breadth, so you could see even further down the beach, or even mm. for, or like, or just, just above you, you could see the sky. So you could see a plane fly by before it comes yeah. into shot. Well, we need to see the Black Mirror episode where this all goes horribly wrong. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and then that'll be my point. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, like, just talking about that. Yeah, I think augmented reality is definitely going to be the way to go over virtual reality because total immersion in cinema I don't think is going to work whereas having additional aspects mm. sort of um, like almost like a hologram put on but obviously not a hologram because not everyone can see it if they don't want to like just having additional elements in there would add to it but not take away from the screen itself mm -hmm. yeah yeah I don't know I mean I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn because I think what you say makes sense but I, I would also like to see some new, something new happen, you know, in cinema. I think I think we've had the. I, I know what you're saying, Brian. You know, you're a purist and everything, and and, and I, I'm kind of with you on that. But it's because that's why I never bought into the whole 3D thing. But I think you know, there's so so much technology uh, that can do some wondrous things at the moment. I, I feel that we might be due a change. You know, something 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 big. But yeah. winter's coming. <laughs> Winter is coming. <laughs> change Winter's is coming. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows. <laughs> uh, um, Fair point. 
Uh, well, are we about ready to... I think we're ready to I, wrap up. Tie huh? this up? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I didn't have anything else to add. Yeah. Um, what do you guys got going on? What uh, Plug yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> like ourselves, where's the usual? Back to the podcast on all... You know, we're on Instagram now. Back to the podcast. Facebook, Twitter. Um, obviously, download for free on iTunes. And, uh, yeah, we, we continue to release some some regular content we've we've had a bit of a quieter summer but we're going to get straight back into it over the autumn and there's obviously there's a lot of uh big releases coming out over the next few months um some of which we've mentioned but you know i'm sure we'll we'll catch up in a few months to discuss those ones as well guys for yeah. you uh well uh, to plug ourselves uh and yeah obviously like find us on Twitter, because that, that's kind of the place where we're most up to date and really interacted mm-hmm. with, and, and then also Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. Uh, and yeah, we, we've we've been really enjoying the way that we've been going with this for the last year, and uh, I, and a, a lot of our you know, film spotlight and stuff like that. We, it's been a lot of fun doing, and uh, we still need to get you guys on for that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well up for that. Somehow arrange that. Yeah. Uh, but so uh, we'll yeah, get that worked out. We'll, off yeah, yeah, we'll figure that out at some yeah. other point. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we're just gonna we're gonna keep going that way. So uh, if you enjoy that, then uh, mm-hmm. uh, just uh, stay tuned for more. And yeah, I just have one little last thing I wanted to mention. Um, oh, yes. Uh, if anyone out there has the means, uh, please go to HoustonFoodBank.org to donate for Hurricane Harvey victims. Oh, um, well, shout, yeah. it, it's the best bet to get your money going towards those rescue and relief efforts that you can. Uh, a lot of people in some pretty serious dire straits there. Um, so if you're able, you can donate money, you can donate food, you can donate time, um, any amount of all of those. Uh, so just take a second. It's the website's super easy to navigate. Um, that's yeah. That's just all I want to say on that. Yeah, I definitely go to that because <laughs> it's like really important right now. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, I've been Paul. I've been Brian. I've been Tom. Yeah. Byron. No, oh, I got it wrong. Got oh my god. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we have to do that again? We've now? all lost track of it. All right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bye folks. Bye. See you later from uh, from the UK as well. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. Uh Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.